This is the Criterion Creeps Podcast, and tonight we're taking a break for an episode. It's episode 225. It's like a quarter. It's like a 25th anniversary of being in the 200s or something. What are you talking about? Laser disc, RJ. That's what, oh. we, that's what we do. We watch a laser disc instead of a regular creep. And we're talking about what's next in our catalog, March. It's like, what, Spine 32, right after Night of the Opera? Scaramouche? I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't even know the words you're saying right now. What does Scaramouche mean? Scaramouche? It's a, yeah. it's a, it's a guy. 1952. Directed by George Sidney. The tagline for this film, RJ. Mm-hmm. Wow, this is a, quite the claim here. The company that made Quo Vadis brings the world another spectacular romantic triumph. Jared, what is Quo Vadis? Quo Vadis? Yeah, what does that mean? Uh, it's a movie title. Look it up. It's, it's some, hey, some Latin. I'm not going to do that, but you know what I did look up? Quo pro quo? Quo pro? Quid, quid quo? pro quo? Quid quo quo? Here's some quid for, pro quo for, for you. For Valor? For Vadis? What's Vadis? Vadis? No. Vallis? So I looked up Scaramouche or yeah. Scaramouche. I, I've got that. I got you covered there, buddy. From Italian, Scaramuccia. Yeah. yeah. Little skirmisher. You know about the mooch? The mooch? I know a mooch. I don't know if it's the same mooch as you. The mooch. Uh, the synopsis for oh, yeah. for Scott mooch. Uh-huh. In 18th century, 18th century France, a young man masquerades as an actor to avenge his friend's murder. That's uh, yeah. That's that's it. It's to the point. That's yeah. a real wharf description. No Very, bullshit, Jared. No bullshit here. No in the, bullshit. In the wolf's den. Wolf's den. Wolf's den. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is a movie that I don't know if there's been a lot of clamor, a lot of <laughs> excitement for Scaramouche. Um, well, you don't know, though. I'd say that if, like, the, the laser discs that we've seen, this mm-hmm. is one that's kind of like, oh, what are you? Uh, I kind of agree because some of the other ones, it's like, I, even though I hadn't seen Swing Time or Night at the Opera or Magnificent Ambersons, I was like, I know what those are. When you said Scaramouche, I was like, I don't know what that Mm -hmm. is. Yeah, this is like kind of, uh, this is the, the B timeline. Oh, okay. This is the, uh, the side B, the, uh, the little EP that gets released after the CD comes out. They're like, there's also Scaramouche. There's Scaramouche. Yeah, that... if, if anyone wants. Yeah. So, uh, let me, let me open up this special, like, B-Sides release. Uh, I've got some, some liner notes, a little bit of, uh, info about what is Scaramouche. So, I don't know. It is based, RJ, on a historical mm-hmm. novel by Raphael Sabatini, published in 1921, and oh, yeah. has been previously adapted in 1923 uh, with the movie called Scaramouche, uh, oh, yeah. which has been described as an, quote, elaborate and unwieldy production, unquote. Uh, Scaramouche was directed okay. by George Sidney, of which this is the only one of his movies I've ever seen. Uh, and the rest of his filmography, all our movies that sound f- kind of familiar to some degree, I don't know anything about much of them. I've, mm-hmm. I've heard of Bye Bye Birdie because it I think shows up in an episode of Mad Men one time. Um, yeah, and that's like, I feel like people use that as a colloquialism, even though it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Do you so, know what I mean? No. He's, okay, good. But he, he makes these Technicolor movies, very lavish productions. Yeah. Uh, and some of his other works include like The, the Three Musketeers from like 49 and Annie Get Your Gun. I've heard of that, but what See, does it mean? Exactly. You've heard of it, but you're like, what is that? And these things exist. There's like also like oh, Pal Joey or something like that. These are the movies that like I Pal Joey? Look it up. Uh, I think it's something like that. That sounds so made up. <laughs> so made up. But okay. I, I'm not gonna look it up. I'm just gonna take your word for oh, it. Oh look at that. Pal Joey. Pal Joey starring Rita Hayworth, Frank Sinatra, Kim Novak. It's a musical. It's Rogers and Hart, man. You don't I don't think Rita Noworth is a real person. Rita Noworth. That's what you said, right? 
Is that like Paul Cassavetes? Screenplay by yeah. Ronald Miller and George Froschel, frequent collaborators. Um, okay. The only movies I've seen of theirs um, was uh, George Froschel's worked on the screenplay for the movie Mrs. Miniver, which I am a fan of. This what movie's movie? Mrs. Miniver, an Academy Award Best Picture winner. Okay. This movie stars Stuart Granger. Yeah. Are, are you de- are you detecting a theme here? Uh, of just who? <laughs> like who? So we we have you I mean, I think you've definitely seen a movie with Stuart Granger cuz you've seen Roger Corman's Secret Invasion. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, he's in there somewhere. You just, you gotta <laughs> look. You gotta look closely. Um, uh, I'm not familiar with him really either, except for like he. So he was in Corman's Secret Invasion. He's in the mercenary movie, The Wild Geese. And uh, way, way back for this very podcast, I watched. I think it was like the Captain the Great movie that I watched when we saw Scarlet Empress. Okay, that was like on YouTube. I he's think he's in that also. Yeah, he, 1934. He was in that. Uh, he is. He left. He's left no. He doesn't leave an impression. Okay, so I since it got brought up, I'm gonna say I thought that that guy actually had some presence in uh, some of his uh, acting, John Lovett style. Uh, I thought he was not too bad, uh, but the whole time I was trying to think, I was like, this guy looks like a mix between Bruce Campbell. And like John Oliver, kind of, but it's like, but it's someone else too, and I couldn't place it. So that's all I could think of the whole movie. John it's like Oliver, John Oliver, and Bruce Campbell. It's a huh. mix between those guys, but I, I didn't think he was bad. I was like, this guy, I can see why he was cast as a lead. He just seems like, I guess maybe he just never took off. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't know. We have Eleanor Parker as, was it Eleanor the redhead? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> the redhead. Uh, yeah. We get like a kind of brief appearance by Nina Falk as Marie mm-hmm. Antoinette. Sure. Uh, Janet Lee. We all know Janet Lee. Who? Uh, you know her daughter, Jamie Lee Curtis. Whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't realize that. Is the Lee and Curtis, is that two last names? Should that be hyphenated? <laughs> no. Like Jamie no. hyphen it's Lee. Different. It's all okay. good. I'm but, confused, but all right. Yeah. I'm always confused. Well, yes. This is this is true. So I'd uh-huh. say that she, so Janet Lee is like, yeah, we know Janet Lee. She's the she's kind okay. of the she's like the other object of desire for old uh what's this guy's name in this thing? Count John Oliver. John Oliver. Yeah. Oh, oh the what? the other guy, the bad guy? No, no, no. That's Mel Ferrer. Oh, and okay. Mel Mel Ferrer. Well, let me just say, he has the distinguished accolade, if there ever one or were one, of being in two movies called Eaten Alive. <laughs> wow. Is he in... Uh... One called Eaten Alive and one called Eaten Alive. Is that the um, Toby Hooper one? Yep. Yeah, that's one of them. Huh. And the other and one's that... like a cannibal movie. He, he's okay. he's kind of like uh, the Leonardo DiCaprio character in uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood where he goes to like Italy and just like, he makes a living being a guy. Mm, I gotcha. uh, but did you also know amongst other things, he was married to Audrey Hepburn. When, when uh, she was alive or when she was passed? Uh, still, still living. Audrey Hepburn that is alive. Well, she was alive, but she's not any longer. Oh, okay. I was going to say, wait a minute. Were, they were. In the Are past we gonna sense. have to add her to uh, the Kirk Douglas phylogenetic tree at no, some point? No, or? She, so she's been she's been gone for a while. Okay, okay, okay. As long as I know who's dead and alive, mm-hmm. I can still get by in this world. Uh, this movie was composed by someone and was also photographed by someone. I feel like anyone listening to this podcast in the last five to ten minutes is gonna say. I don't even want to listen to this movie anymore. Whether it's good or bad, I don't give a shit. I don't know who any of these people are, and uh, <laughs> maybe they're tired of it. So this movie is about, uh, well, it opens up with you know, pomp and circumstance. Not the music itself, but a lot of like swelling about Scaramouche and like Scaramouche. Title, title cards. And then we're introduced to this Duke Lamond or something. And he's just... He's just killing guys. 
So, Jared, my first con- uh, my first note. I don't make notes anymore. I, as we've said, you, but I actually you free wrote down ball a it. Note. I put, wait, did he kill that guy? No, nope. because <laughs> I was really thrown off. Because like you see people fencing all the time, but it's mm-hmm. usually playful. Mm-hmm. But then he like he hits him, and I was like, oh yeah, he got him. And then he pulls his sword out, and then the guy just fell <laughs> over dead. And I was like, whoa. Well, he's did he he's, kill he's that keeping. Guy? I mean, he might have survived. Like he was just keeping his insides inside yeah. he's plugging but he the actually hole. stabbed that dude oh yeah he pierced him good yeah. yeah so i that was my first thought i was like wait a minute yeah i had, I, people I, in this I, I, I did have to rewind it because i was like wait yeah. a, wait wait what, what just happened here this guy's dead now uh-huh. he's, and now he goes he's like oh that's fine and he goes off to fence the next guy you're like oh does he hate that guy too well and that's what i thought i was like is he gonna kill that fucking guy also no. because if i was if I was the guy in line waiting and I just saw him kill another guy, I'd be like, fuck this. I'm out of here. No. And that's just me. And then uh, then some, some dudes on horses arrive to beckon him because, you know, Marie Antoinette wants to see him. Mm-hmm. And, and the Marie Antoinette? Kristen the, the, Dunst? The one and only Kristen Dunst. Okay. Cool. Here, here cool. in 1952. Looking, looking good. Yeah. Di- different. Completely different, but good. Well, well, I mean, it's up for interpretation, right? What she actually looked like. Right. It may, maybe it was, she was played by two different actresses, as it turns out. Could have been. It could have been Kirsten Dunst and Kira Knightley. Would you have been able to Michelle, tell the oh, difference? Actually, I think it was Michelle Williams. Could have been Kirsten Dunst and Michelle Williams. Could you have been able to tell the difference? I don't know. What we have to turn to YouTube on that one. So... Uh, the queen's upset because there's pamphlets going around, uh, signed by a pseudonym of Marcus Brutus. Yeah, that's a person that's that a, exists. That's certainly name, a name. And, uh, she's like, I want you to find out about this guy, this, this, this individual, this person. They, uh, they're, they're not saying nice things about me. I don't like it. And he's like, yes, <laughs> I'll do that. I will, yes. I will definitely take care of this for you. Um, mm-hmm. My next note here, RJ, is this is going to be a rough one, isn't it? Interesting. Continue. And then I wrote flashbacks to that stage and spectacle, Alina and her men. Mm. Are you talking about drama nerds, Jarrett? And then I also write, oh, and Mel Ferrer is in both of these movies. Alina He's and in her that men. fucking movie too? Yeah, you wouldn't notice because it's Alina and her men. Well, I watched that thing. I just didn't think it was any good. Correct. You know what I mean? Correct. Um, my, my my other real big note here is uh, uh, Mel Gibson a la The Patriot look. Uh, yeah, the lead. Uh, yeah. What did you say his name was? John Oliver? He does look. Old St- Stuart Granger. He's colonial American yeah. through and through. I mean, that is the uh, the look of the time. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess, hey historically accurate we that's that's one tick for the pro column <laughs> one it's one tick uh when a guy died that's another well i mean tick. i that's mean cool. that, that that was noteworthy yeah it was noteworthy for sure it's pissing me off what this the character's name is and uh which guy Stuart grandeur's character okay well you keep talking i'll oh, find it yeah i'm no I'm, I'm looking everything's just going very slowly ah andre moreau <laughs> Yeah, I know all about that guy. You know about that guy? Uh, the Marquis de Maine, as opposed to whatever I had. De, de Mont, Le Monde. Le Monde. Le Monde. The Le Monde's so, configuration? Th- th- I mean, just so you folks know, this is going to be the last word on Scaramouche. We're, we're, we're going to get mouche heads coming down on us hard, buddy. Are they, are they at I, all like I, I guys? I, they might be worse. Wow. They, okay. might, they might be worse, because these might be the real Sabatini fans. Oh, yeah. Well, fuck them. I'll take them on. So anyway, um, <laughs> Andre finds out that his buddy, his own close personal friend, he's this Marcus Brutus dude. And they're talking about a uh, revolution. There's going to be a French mm-hmm. revolution because it's France. You know, you mm-hmm. know about that, Marie Antoinette? She tells us how, how about lettuce eating cake and shit. And that's not going to stand. Hey, uh, in Mighty Ducks, they talk about cake eaters. And Andrew said, what's a cake eater? And I said, well, let me tell you. <laughs> and I just made that sound for a while. She never picked yeah. up on the 
yeah. anything else. So we're kind of met like so Andre he's uh he's taken care of, but money's depleting. He's mm-hmm. he's a uh, a cynic. And by the end of the movie, okay. he'll be an idealist. In what sense? Exactly. Okay. So, uh, his friend gets killed by the Duke, and he tries to do something about it, but he has no sword skills. Because that's what you do. That's, like, essentially it's legalized killing, this whole dueling system, which I think is better captured in the Ridley Scott movie, The Duelists. Or, check out Barry Lyndon. Uh, mm-hmm. you, you've got choices. You don't have oh, yeah. to. You don't have to watch this movie. Um, and I don't know. He meets Janet Leigh on the road. Her her state her coach breaks down, and he's like macking on her. But then he finds out that oh, we might be half siblings. Which by the end turns out maybe not. <laughs> and then and then they're not. And then they can bang safely because that's a they, that's, um what sorry they, they, they can bang. I don't remember that being a part of the plot. It's, it's here. like it's like a pecan sandy. It's got a double meaning. <clears throat> okay. No, you understand? You're following me here. Uh, I mean, I'm on board as much as I can be. Okay. Um, and then uh, the, the movie just follows the trajectory that you'd expect from a nondescript 1950s action picture, of which it seems like there's a particular style that this I think encapsulates very well. Where it's kind of, again they kind of blur they have these titles and if you look it up which i will rj um i can look it up Tell me it'll, it'll, be, it'll up. be like it'll be like a title of a place with an exclamation mark behind it uh and then you'll be like oh i should check that one out like detroit with uh, an exclamation point. or something like duel in the jungle let's find one of the one word or title or, or hell how about cargo to cape town I, I, I mean, I've never seen it. Is it good? Tripoli. Atoll, it... Atoll K. Anne of the Indies. The Adventure. Ch- China Corsair. Dakota 308. Quebec. You know about, you know about Quebec? Uh, so, how about Sirocco? Is it... Smuggler's Sirocco? Gold. Smuggler's Island. I'm just grabbing I know, titles. Just I know about Curly's Gold. The Brigand. Art Is Curly's Gold down there? Buona Devil. Who? <laughs> Stars Nigel Bruce. Who? You know about Who? The, you know about these movies? Nigel the Bruce. Ma- I know Robert how, how, the Bruce. How, how about Macau? Macau. How about the prisoner the the prisoner of Zenda? Who? Big adventure. Big adventure. Jared, what are we talking about? We're talking about feelings, <laughs> impressions. Okay. So anyway, this is uh, a story of revenge, kind of. But yeah. it's all about this guy who's kind of now on the run from the Duke because he tried to kill him. He doesn't like this guy. and He's linked to another like a failed revolutionary type. He goes and hides out in the, the circus the the theater mm-hmm. um and then where he becomes scaramouche scaramouche which is from the comedia dell'art do you think he comes to it naturally or do you think it's going to take some work to uh to fit into the theater tr- 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 so he's a natural oh it turns out so like not only handsome he's like has a little he's got some like lessening money and like women love him but he's just mm-hmm. like acting so easy to me i just don't understand <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it turns out revolution's easy too like you just like you stick it to the to the rich kind of but no you don't actually in this movie it kind of just like says ah yeah don't worry about those don't worry about political ramifications of unfair systems mm. don't don't think about those things think about the the swashbuckle and sword fights because we had a little, we had another attempted sword fight later on but he's still not as good he's still not as mm-hmm. good as the, the old dukester and then there's some subterfuge and like he's putting on the mask because they think he's this like horribly deformed man like, same what's with that like like that's like some star trek makeup right the Scaramouche, the yeah. actual guy who's yeah. all messed up. Yeah. Well, I think what it is, Jared, you ever heard about the 1812 Irish potato famine? Uh, 
I'm aware of its. You work. ever heard about pox? Um, yeah. Uh, it's, 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 it's a not a bad magic card. Pox. Pox. Three black. Yeah. No one. Uh, no one listening to this plays magic. I guarantee it. They might have played magic when pox was a thing. They might have. You ever heard of art? I, I know it's not real. That's that's very true. That's very true. Yeah, I don't know what that de- guy's deal is. He just has a messed up face, and they're like, "Oh, that's old weird face." Put a mask you know? on him. Put a mask on him. He's got that squishy, squishy lip. Yeah. Like, right. And a weird brow going on. You go. Okay. So yeah, uh, he's training to get better. And yeah, it, and he's it trying. Seems, seems pretty straightforward. And then uh, then we get a big sword fight at the end. That's like pretty good. Like it's a pretty yeah. well laid out piece of choreography um mm-hmm. it, it really feels like mel ferrer is really going for it and just like really trying to kill him which is actually mm-hmm. nice it's not just like artfully aha pincing with and stabbing at you very nicely and politely it's like no he's hacking away he's really trying to get him in like so it's well paced in that sense i mean it's no polanski's Macbeth, which is like the ultimate sword fight in my opinion which is mm-hmm. slow and brutal but this is fencing so it's gonna be a lot faster paced but you know what, the, RJ? At the end of the day, um, I don't know. The the guy gets the girl, and then you feel real bad for the redhead. But she winds up; she's already found a new dude, and that new dude's Napoleon. And he looks at the camera and goes, "Dun dun 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 dun." dun. And then does he wink? The and scene. <laughs> he doesn't wink though. Uh, he kind of goes, hmm, hmm, hmm. He, he, he goes, a, like, kind of a little snoot out of his nose. And, uh, he says, I like my ice cream. That's chocolate, no, that's vanilla, not, that's and not, strawberry. There, uh, there you go. You almost saved it. You almost saved Boing. it. There you go. My ice cream, <laughs> chocolate, vanilla. So, uh, <laughs> Bobby Duba, l- laser disc. <laughs> Yeah, what about the laser Cri- disc, Jared? Um, yeah, Criterion laser disc. I don't know. This obviously is someone really liked this movie over there back in the day. Uh-huh. Uh, it has yet to be re-released under the Criterion collection proper, which is why we're here today. How does when that make? Do how does that make? How does that make you feel? I feel like it can't come soon enough. I feel like Scaramouche should have been Spine One Thousand. Fuck that Godzilla shit. <sighs> Scaramouche, more like Scara snooze. Whoa! I thought you were gonna change the M to a D because in classic Jarrett style. <laughs> classic Jarrett style. That's, That'd be a sick that's review. So, that's so crass. Yeah, but if anyone, if if there's a letterbox review called Scaradouche, you just Focus no. Up. I said it first. No. You better credit me. No. Number one Criterion podcast, global phenom. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so uh, so Laserdisc, do you think there are some special features on this, Jared? Oh, who cares? <laughs> okay, do so, you want me to tell you, do, do, do you want do, me to well, talk about Scaramouche? Sure, you could. I mean, do you want, do we, do you want me to tell you about Scaramouche, the, the stock clown character of the 16th century? Fuck, I couldn't think of anything I'd want to hear about less. Uh, Scaramouche, well, Scaramouche <laughs> literally means little skirmisher. Mm-hmm. The role combined characteristics of the Zani servant and the Capitano, the masked henchman, with some assor- so Capitano. It's just like Tony Soprano here. Cap- uh, El Capo. Yeah, exactly. With some oh. assortment of villainous traits, usually attired in black Spanish dress and burlesquing a don, he was often beaten by a Harlequin for his boasting and cowardice. Uh, and then he kind of Same. becomes a character in the Punch and Judy puppet shows, which I know you're a big fan of. Wait a minute. He was beaten up by the Harley Quinn. I know Punch and Judy. Neil Gaiman did some Punch and Judy shit mm-hmm. because, of course, he did. Of course, he um, did. <laughs> of course, he did. So are you telling me that Scaramouche is the Joker? Um, Is he the original Joker? <sighs> Should I? Should my review of this be a Giphy clip of Jared Leto's Joker? Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm gonna do it right now. While I, you're talking. I, I feel that's not accurate, but maybe you could say the dynamic between Scaramouche and uh, Redhead. It's like Joker and Harley. Criminal, well, that's what I'm saying. Criminal sanity. Man, 
And when you look up come, Joker, come, there's come, not come, a lot of Jared Leto gifts. Come, come into Black Label. Black Vertigo Black Label? Well, Vertigo doesn't exist anymore, RJ. It's just Black Label? It's just Black Label. DC Black Label. Do they have any Scaramouches on it? Not yet. Frig. All right. Frig. <laughs> Tell me more about Scaramouche. Nothing. The, uh, the uh, thing. Yeah, this left nothing on me, man. I got nothing. That's good. So, like but, but I'm I am more than welcome to talk about it with you and RJ and see how you felt about this movie. All right, Jared, I'm gonna blow your fucking mind. This is the best movie we've ever watched. That's no, I'm just kidding. Inaccurate. But uh, I actually, I think, uh, I think you are way more leaning towards big shit pile than I am. I actually, what do you call think a Scare shit pile? It's just like, ugh. Like I, I don't know. Here, here's my thing. Yeah. I actually thought. Scaramouche had some very good things, and then I, I thought it had some things that I was like, I really don't want this. <laughs> so I think the problem, I actually, I think the sword fighting, the fencing, I think is actually really well done. Sure. Uh, my biggest thing for it is I think the use of space is really good, mm-hmm. and I don't mean like, I don't mean the start of the theater fight where they're like jumping around uh, each of the balconies. That's cool too. But one scene I actually really liked is when they're walking down the stairs, and it's the huge atrium. And they just show the whole thing, and it's just these two dudes working their way through it. I, I just, yeah. I actually thought that scene was really cool. I was like, "There's just this huge fucking space." So you're talking about the end and of the just movie. Moving through, yeah, the at the end of the movie. The, 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 the only the one thing that people actually talk about with this movie is the sword fight. Is the sword fighting? Okay. Yeah, so that's good. So like, yeah, and I, I just thought the use of space and uh, the use of props, I think, is good too. One, one prop I thought was really well used was when he tries to stab through the, uh, one of the balcony, like. Uh, Balls oh, in between oh. balconies, and he tries to stab him through, and he actually blocks it because it would have hit him, like through the wall. And I was like, I think that's actually a really neat little like detail that well, they. Well, I like when this. they, I like when they go, uh, behind the set on the stage. And that's he, that's and he, also cool. And, and he carves through the wall. Yeah, and he carves yeah. through the wall. That's also good. So yeah. I, yeah, that last sword fight is super good. But uh, I, I really like the the. The way the oh. space is used. So I did have a thought when I was watching that, just like to interrupt a bit. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I was like, I, I had like the thought at the time, but I didn't write it down. But I was like, man, is there anything more satisfying than like, like in anything where it's like you, you you have a guy who's going to kill a rich asshole? Yeah, and then fuck you, it doesn't happen because uh, because uh, taking I, the I, high I, road, high road, fuck off. Because I'm like, come on, road. come on, you gotta like have the guy pull a gun and then you turn around and you finish the job. And then, yeah. or like the old man finishes the job and he gets like nods knowingly, like, I know you couldn't do it, kid, but now you got a clear <laughs> conscience. And then you beat him into his own game and he walks off and it's like, yeah, I want I want that comfort of uh, of just cliches. <laughs> no. You know what would have been amazing is if uh, if he did pull out that gun, the Duke, and then a shot rang out. And everyone looks around, and it's up from the balcony, and it's Steve Buscemi from uh, Billy Madison, and he just kind of gives him the nod like well, he does in Billy Billy Madison, and then he keeps walking. I forgot. I got forgot Steve Buscemi was in this. Uh, well, he's one of the characters. Well, he's, he's one. one he's characters. one of the characters. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, no, I, I know what you mean. Uh, but yeah, I think that last, like, I mean, obviously the last sword fight is really good, but I just like the layout of how it, uh, like how they use the environment around them. And then kind of like what you said, I do think the scaffolding Jarrett of the, uh, the pacing of the sword fights where the first one he's playing with him a lot. Like he thinks it's funny. The second one, it's still like that. And he's like, Oh, you actually can do stuff now, but uh, you're still not that good. So uh, like the buildup of it, I actually think is uh, like pretty good. I was like, I like that. Uh, so the, all the sword play stuff is really good. And then, the opening when he's actually killing people that really threw me off with this movie mm-hmm. because I was just like, like, so we already talked about like, I was like, well, fuck what is going on here? But then I was like, at least it kind of sets the stakes for it. It's like, no, they'll actually kill each other if they want to. Kind. Well, like they, they like, At, they, they, they like they tummy, can. they tummy tap you. And then you go, Oh, and then you just turn over. Yeah. There's no like, well, gr- in one no, of the like, there's no like neck wound where it's just like going. Th- th- yeah. Th- th- I think there is a little bit of a blood splurt in this though. There is on a, yeah. there's a blood spurt, and then uh, in the second sword fight, he does play with them where he's he's cutting up his arms. Yeah, and uh, wow, and that's his that's shirt. Yeah, they they do that on TV. Vintage yeah, stuff. But yeah, there is a blood spurt uh, in this. So I actually thought like the, I was like, 
I just wasn't expecting that they were just full on killing dudes and blood was going to be spilling out. Mm. And I was like, that's cool. That's cool. So I think all the sword fighting stuff is really good. Uh, but then there's the there's the fucking the, the theater, theater aspect. And it's like, it's death. such a bummer. It's such death in this. It's, like, uh, so, uh, it, like, a bit, just, but, but I feel like, okay, so if we were to say pop on Black Swan now. Sure. Like the fi- the feel of it would be so different, right? Because yeah. it's shot different. The I would argue that the visual sophistication yeah. uh, and the contemporaneous helps it and aids it. Fine artisan film the, craft. Exactly, RJ. Exactly. Uh-huh. Pretty good show stuff, and uh-huh. uh, it's all part of the the mixture, you know. Slow roasted, mm-hmm. you know. Sure, I could slow roast it. Right. I know. So I know what you mean. I think it's it's dated. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it doesn't help. It, it, it really, and it always look. These movies always look the goddamn same. And I, the the, the 1940s, 50s, the theater look. That's what I mean. Dated. Magic yeah. flute. Henry V. Those Renoir movies. God damn it. I I yep. I, I really um, I'm not a fan. Yep. No, I know, and I uh, I I am on your side for that one. Like, I think it really brings it down to a fucking crawl uh and like i do think just like the old theater stuff that's what i mean by dated where it's like they're playing up all these jokes with like the practical jokers and that's where like cue your 80 year old man is like this is real comedy you kids don't know what jokes with, are with your talk ticks yeah and it's and then uh like a edgy teen with like a fade turns around it's like you ever seen tim and eric's dump pants d pants mm-hmm. that's the pinnacle of comedy oh, man. that's old that's old. that's that's grandpa humor now too well that is too so i guess i'll be that grandpa in another 80 years telling other kids why they're bad you're, you're uh, you already are there my friend i know but that's what it is like you ever listen to, is... you, ever, you ever listen to weird al tapes uh i've heard a weird al yeah. i've heard a weird al yeah. uh but it so like there's there's all the there's all the actual Scaramouche stuff which I feel like they brought in but I feel like this movie would have been better if there was no Scaramouche if there was no theater and it's kind of like what you said the Duelists that's just a better that's just a better version of this like there's no theater it's just sword fighting the whole time and like I don't know yeah it's got Harvey Keitel being ang- right angry and psychotic. Uh huh. Like, that's that movie, like that movie is terrific. So like it's like yeah. If you're gonna spend your two hours, go go check out Duelists again. Just watch that again. God damn, watch watch watch, watch watch fucking Barry Lyndon again. I've only seen Barry yeah. Lyndon once in my life. It was incredible, and I haven't watched it again. But I fucking seen Scaramouche once too many. <laughs> like, Barry Lyndon, it's, it's got the best pi- spine punch I've ever seen. I, I will never forget that thing. It is so good. It is so good. The uh, the, the the poster for Scaramouche is quite nice on Letterboxd. Look how well, yeah, realistic. Old posters little, are always nice. Well, sometimes some of them are very yellow, and it kind of uh, bothers me how yellow yeah. they are. But now everything's blue and yellow. Well, the Scaramouche poster looks great next to Magnificent Ambersons in my uh, Criterion Laserdisc mm, ranked list. Right. Yeah, because I mean, those they're both movies about rich people, right? Correct. Does Magnificent Ambersons have sword fights in it though? Uh, I don't think so hard to say my man so i don't know it's tough call which one is better but the fans decide i guess but so anyways i don't i think i don't think i'm as harsh on this as you are i do really like the sword fighting but uh, all the theater stuff is like it it really brings you down in this movie and you're like fuck i don't care about scaramouche and the theater stop making stop making movies about movies and theater enough we get it it's real hard making movies. It's hard being an actor in the theater. I get oh, it. But, but it's not. I See? don't care. Look, look, but this guy just walked into the role, and he was like, I'm a natural-born actor. Yeah, well, actually, that's a good point. That's a good point. I'm so but good. a lot I'm of so... theater movies are like that. I'm so good at this. Remember how Swing Time was like, it's so hard dressing up in these costumes. Hey, Remember that? You, know that, you know that adventure movie from the 1950s in Technicolor called Mogambo? Mogambo? I've never heard of Mogambo. What is it? I don't know. It's a movie. How about The Pagans? That's Italian. That's that's not American adventure. No, I'm not films. into that Italian stuff. How about Sadco or Sangaree? 
I haven't heard of that one either. Yeah, see, this is uh it's it's interesting what will happen, say sixty years from now when all these movies that we think are important on Letterboxd, no one will ever think of them ever again. Uh I mean I already don't think any of these things are important, so how about Attila? The Hun? Yeah. One and the same. Sophia Loren. I know about Huns. But what about the Count of Monte Cristo sandwiches? Uh, so I do like Monte Cristos. Uh, I introduced that to uh, some other people that don't live in Canada. I won't mention them right now. But uh, um, I like Monte Cristos. And I did think of uh, Monte Cristo when I was watching this. And then I made a, mm-hmm. I made a tortilla. Oh. Like a cheese tortilla. Uh, Huh. That's not at all a Monte Cristo, but I made no. it. No. Fair enough. So, just so uh, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, you want to hear about who hates this movie? And it's like, there's not even any... even watch this movie? Exactly. Like, That's what usually happens with these movies. It's like over a thousand views, which is something. Uh, more yeah. than I expected. But maybe not. But yeah. uh, some two-star reviews. We've got Spencer. Aug- August at the movies. Day two. I was here for the stunts, but even so, those 20-minute sword fights were a bit much. Uh, I don't think the sword fights are too much, like almost at all. It's pretty well it's got going for it. Yeah. So this guy's got a uh, weird taste. His favorite films are Love Actually, Schindler's List, Billy Elliot, and then Atonement. So it's a very it's a it's a mixed spread, but they also have Portrait of a Lady on Fire, five stars. So what are you gonna do about that? Speaking of who hates, uh, do, you, do you see that uh, Luxembourg Blues uh, is is now a or was always a fan? Is that the person we've mentioned before in the who hates section uh, a few times uh, with uh, on Fat Girl? I did see the name pop up, and I was like, I don't, uh, I couldn't remember. Well, f- fortunately, they did not get roasted it's too bad. I guess they would maybe be on the show otherwise, but. <laughs> well, we'll see. I, I think Who knows? I, I think, yeah, I think they liked, yeah, was, they liked Gummo, or they liked Fat Girl more than Gummo, or something like that. Well, that's, that's fine. Maybe, maybe they'll sign up for, jeez, uh, I don't know. What's a good episode coming up? Scaramouche? Maybe they'll sign up for Scaramouche. Steven Tubbs, two stars. Big Tubby, all right. You end up cheering for Mel Ferrer. Who's Mel Ferrer? Uh, the bad guy. Oh, okay. This guy's a bad guy. One of his favorite movies is The Tin Drum. Get out of here, Steven Tubbs. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, the Long Day Closes from 1992. Berlin, Alexander Platz, and Secrets and Lies from 96. Let's see. Not a lot of ratings, Jared. Not a lot. But they got Roger Rabbit at five stars, and that's cool. They also have Unforgiven at five stars, so that's oh, yeah. also cool. Yeah. Uh, what else? Battleship Potemkin. You know that one, right? Everyone knows old Battleships. Po- Fartkin. Uh, half star films are. Man, I haven't even. I don't even know what any of this shit is. What is any of this stuff? Do you even watch movies, RJ? Uh, apparently not. Like I like what is Jared? Can you tell me what uh, the festival is from 2018? What about the miracle season from 2018? What about Giallo starring Adrian Brody from oh, 2009? The, uh, I think the movie that you had, you had to like get at Canadian blockbusters. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. hey, Jared, here's a bad take for you, buddy. One star to Crumb, one oh, of your favorite films. Dear, dear one star dear, to dear. Rocky Three. Oh, that's no, no. the that's the best Rocky. It's the best one. It's the best one, hands down. Mm-hmm. That's got the, the best montage in cinema history. Cinema history. One star to You Don't Mess with the Zohan. That is a certified film, Jared. Certified by who? The committee. Ah. This person also gave Titanic one star too, so huh? Weird. Is that, is that an outrageous claim? I mean, I think t- Titanic is not a bad movie. Is it? I didn't think it was. I don't know. What no. do I know? Kids didn't like it. I remember not wanting to like it as a kid, and then I watched it. And I was like, yeah, "This is okay." 
It's okay. When I, when I watched it as a kid, uh, hey, that's a movie. It got brought up like a week ago. Movies where you watch with your parents. I remember that nudie scene, Jarrett. Uh, man, parents were like, don't watch it. It's nude. Don't, don't look at Kate Winslet. And I was like, all right, I won't. But then you did. No, I still, I've never seen a naked body. Oh, good for you. Good for you. Yeah. I'm waiting for eternal salvation. Hopefully. Fair. Fair. Hopefully. Um, hey, uh, one Bye. more. Allison M., two and a half stars. Scaramouche always bores me to tears, yet there are so many different versions. Vegan alert, reference to choking a bird in a hypothetical situation, and woman wants oysters. Whoa, 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 whoa. I call a lot of animal stuff on on this show, Mm -hmm. but the just talking about it? Is that too much? It, 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 I don't know, RJ. You tell me. Well, this person is a filmmaker from Los Angeles, apparently. Uh, they were accepted into cons 2019 through their cinephile accredit- accreditation process, and they went. Uh, George check- went? <laughs> Not George went, but Allison M. went, uh, uh, is what they said. Um, check out their vegan movies reviews on SoundCloud. I might check that out. They should check out my vegan re- uh, removes, uh, reviews. When, I've, as you eat meat. <laughs> yeah, but I talk about it. Uh, I've chronicled the films I've watched using Movie Pass. I also recently became a vegan. No, you don't say. Uh, so I will note if there's animal, any animal cruelty in films, or so other vegans and animal animal mother, lovers will be forewarned. I can get down on that. I do something similar. Uh, then there's links to their um, short called Switch Destinies. There's a link to a short called Heavy Lifting. Jared, it's about a girl who falls for a guy who she doesn't realize is gay. Hate when that uh, happens. I hate when that happens. Favorite films include Bonnie and Clyde, the the what from ninety one. Bonnie and Clyde, Double Life of Veron- uh, uh, Veronique. Yep. Sense and Sensibility from 95. Yep. Fear of Fear from 75. Okay. Interesting. Let's see, let's see if there's any other big ticket mentions in here. Oh, they got Eternal Sunshine as a five-star film. So you're talking my language. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. Tiger King, five stars? Isn't that Animal Cruelty, the the movie? Like, Is I it? feel like they're not sticking to their own guns on this. Maybe they're, they're new vegans. But Tiger King came out this year. Yeah. You know, well, it, they, no, in the review, it said they were vegan in uh, 2017 is when they became oh, vegan. Oh, okay. I missed that part. I didn't um, mention that because I felt I thought it was irrelevant at the time. Well, that, now it becomes not. now. Look, see, you, gotta, you have to like say everything. You got to cross everything. They gave Trash Humpers a half a star. Oh, I, they gave. Uh, that's fair. That's, that's fair to not to not to care for it. <laughs> Uh, what about Multiple Maniacs? Is that a half a star? Uh, probably for some people. What about Bordello of Blood? Is no, that a half star no, film, Jared? I've never seen it, and I don't hear good things. People are about uh, that Demon Knight. Yeah, Demon Knight's awesome. Bordello of Blood is also good. I recommend it to everyone. Uh, wait, whoa, whoa. They gave Phenomenon half a star? Yeah, that's the John Travolta 96 film. Oh. It's not a half a star film, Jared. I see. Not really. Mm. Okay. Um, you know, I was going to say, I'm, I'm just looking at 1950s adventure movies that I would want to watch. Okay. Some have got Errol Flynn. Some have got Gregory Peck. Okay. There's a uh, there's a Gregory Peck Moby Dick. Sure. Um, there's some Tarzan movies. You know Tarzan? Tarzan? I know Tarzan. Taurus Bulba. Yeah, yeah, I Is know. Is that the same he, thing? He, uh, no, no, not the same. Uh, we, we got some uh, Kirk Douglas father to of many 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 men uh-huh okay uh, like twenty thousand leagues under the sea mm-hmm. and uh the vikings which i actually have been wanting to see for a while uh okay. the Vi- uh treasure island one of robert crumb's brother's favorite movies and i think all, cool. all the brothers like that. i've never seen that treasure island it's on uh disney plus my man 
well, shit, some, someone better hook me up with that. Oh, and look, another Gregory Pecco, Captain Horatio Hornblower. You know how I feel about the sea, RJ. You know, you know how I feel about the seamen. Uh, I know about the poop deck. No, yep. well, I mean, <laughs> we're all both the master and the commander here on the pod. Fuck yeah, that movie's awesome. When's yeah. that going to be? Well, in the look at that. Too? Is that Ulysses? Is that is that a Kirk Douglas? I see a Photoshop head on. Really is bad. That it sure Kirk is. Douglas? It sure is a Kirk Douglas. That's now three. I think. Uh, I feel like we're. It's something. Something's trying to tell us something. From from beyond, like to watch more Kirk Douglas films. It, it, from the, sim, the I think the simulation is trying to tell us something. Which one, the Matrix or the uh, the Harlan Ellison one? The Wachowski one. Oh, oh okay. No, yeah. uh, Flame and the Arrow. That's got some Burt Lancaster. It like, does. Sure does, and he's 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 a great guy. I like that Burt. Burt is Burt Lancaster also one of Kirk Douglas's son. Uh, I think they're brothers. Okay. And I think Man, like it... they're him and Gregory Peck and oh actually no, Gregory Peck and Cary Grant are brothers. Okay. Um but I'm not sure who they're I think uh, Errol Flynn Senior is Cousin? like the patriarch of all of them. Like he just went around like he's like that uh that Irish guy who like was uh Neil Nile of Nine Wives or something like that. He just he just captured a bunch of women and raped them all in the castle. Wink. Um, that's how it happened. That's how Hollywood started. Okay. That's the real history, folks, of Hollywood. Um. And then Harvey Weinstein happened, and then it ended Hollywood because COVID got unleashed. Uh, Weinstein created COVID. You gotta, read the, you... you gotta read the right newsletters, RJ. You gotta watch the right YouTube videos. But in Borat 2, Rudy Giuliani said that uh said it was something else. What am I supposed to believe? I don't know what any I don't know what any of us are supposed to believe anymore. Burt Lancaster? Is he Kirk Douglas' son? For, well, I, I don't know. I'm not sure how Fred McMurray plays into all this either. Oh my god! This is the most complicated episode of the podcast we have ever done. Hey, you know about the Mask of the Avenger? That's a Monte Cristo movie. Monte Cristo's go great with plum sauce. Let me just tell you that. Ugh. Oh, no way! What are you talking about? Have plum you, sauce have with you, Monte Cristos? Yeah, dude. Hey, uh, you you have the weirdest dip uh, thing like Ar- Arge. combos. Our Arge. Arge, Ugh, you, you, this you, is preamble <laughs> conversation. I'm bringing this up next week. I I need to get an opinion on this. <laughs> Plum sauce with the Monte Cristo? What? It's just like what? Well, what, what do you dip a Monte Cristo in? Ketchup. Well, what's what's what is ketchup made of? Okay, not plums. Sugar. <laughs> Sweet. Hey, hey, I got no problem with plum sauce. You know what I like with plum sauce actually? Is uh like chicken uh like nuggets, chicken tenders with plum sauce. That's actually pretty good. How do you like your Monte Cristo with a little scaramouche on the side? I'd take anything with a little scaramouche on the side, if you know what I mean. You got any final thoughts on uh, scaramouche tonight and or adventure? Do you like it? I mean, you like that? Uh, I mean. It's good that it won't ever be added to the collection, and if it is, we've already reviewed it, so we won't have to do it again. Yeah, safe. That's how that works, right? It, yeah, I, I think so. It's like diplomatic immunity. Diplomatic immunity. That's a Christmas movie. You gonna watch that this year? No. Probably the best choice. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. No. Good. After the break, um. RJ is going to marry Napoleon. Wink. Or, or at least bang him. What do you think his favorite ice cream would be, though? I mean, chocolate. Ugh. With, with, like, pralines in it. Like pecan sandies? Like pecan sandies. Number nine. 